I think that the thing I want to look at first is the button. It's kind of the easiest one to be like, like, because the button should be the highest win rate, right? So yeah, regardless, it's a small sample. We know it could be whatever. It's like, let's figure it out with the button first because that should be the highest win rate. So when okay. we're losing in that spot, it's like the, the most likely to be making mistakes, right? Because like the big button, you're going to lose. So yeah. like, you know, when the big button you're losing, it's like, okay, you're supposed to lose there. So it's all right. It, the gains aren't going to be as large. So let's just look at but, button play. Um, I want to look at button play soft flop. Is this a good way of doing it when you're doing your own hand history of views? Is this a good way to go through it as well? This yeah. structure? Yeah. I, I mean, to be fair, most of my interviews, I just go through chronologically if I'm in a mode yeah. where I'm able to go through all of them. But okay. if you're in the volume mode and it's like I'm playing way too many hands to go through all my hands like that, it would be yeah. unbelievably difficult to go through 10,000 hands or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to just sort it and be like, okay, I, I need to look over. One thing in game two is you should mark hands. Like yeah. I, mark, I mark a bunch of hands every single session and I'm like, okay, no matter what I review this week, I'm looking over these important hands because I didn't know what to do in those spots. So then I'll think about it all, out, like off the table more. Um, okay. But then in terms of like overall study, I'll definitely do this and just like sort for button play, sort for different things. Um, yeah. And, and just start running through hands quickly and, and seeing if, if there's a, any major errors or anything like that. So we're going to go through these pretty fast, honestly, and just try to see if there's any like big, uh, like overarching yes. things that stick out. So yeah, it was a mixture of 25 and 50 that I was playing, so. Okay, cool. So obviously good. I like this, it's good. Small bet's fine. So the rest of the hand is fine. Um, small bet's good here. I like your size too. I think that we talked about last time that your small size yeah. is like a little bit big. So like your, this is smaller, which is good. Um, Continuing versus the raise here is like pretty, pretty iffy because yeah, like yeah, your equity is okay, but you're going to under realize your equity a lot with nines in the spot. And you're also blocking like nine Jack, nine queen that could be bluffing. Um, and if he has two diamonds, it's like, if he keeps betting, you're going to have to fold future streets. Yeah. Obviously he, his hand has decent equity. So I think in, like, if I put this through the solver, it's going to tell you to call. I can almost guarantee it. Because, like, okay. you're getting a good price. You have nines. Like, the turn goes check, check sometimes, et cetera. But I think in general, in game, in these spots, people don't check raise enough. So they're, like, yeah. pretty king X heavy. And, uh, and you're going to be doing pretty bad against that range in general. It's so, like, this hand's fine. But I, it, if you fold in this spot, I would say it's totally good, you know? Like, it's totally okay, cool. So I do remember this hand and I thought, should I be giving up here or not? And because using my cautious side is give up, that's kind yeah. of why I called. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good to push back on that for sure. And I think yeah, that yeah. like when the queen comes and he checks, I think he has a queen a lot. Like queen jack, queen, you know, queen 10, queen 9, something like that. Um, or he could just have a king still. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like your fold on the river. It's good. Nice. Monotone boards, all really tiny bets. You can three better forward or three better call preflop here. It's good. Yeah. And I I've like been this. sizing that like you said before. So I've been trying to be a bit more nice. Like whether it's a two or a four sizing differently. I think that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's tiny bets good. Um, you can use two bet sizes here, big or small. It's big, big's fine. Have to call. I would just fold now, probably. Yeah, this is good. It's fine. I think so. One one quick thing is like, I I don't know the player pool you're playing, but in general across six max, people under check raise flop big sizes, right? Yeah. So like if you bet small here, they're gonna reach closer to the correct check raise frequency than when you use the big size. Um, yeah. 
So like, I think that his range is going to be pretty strong here, but you just have too much equity. So you have to call yeah. once the turn comes, doesn't bring you more equity. He bets you full. I think this is a good hand. Okay. Cool. Over calling three is fine. Good. Good, good, good open. Um, I would play check, check, probably nice. Um, you could play like a mergey bet here or just check, check is fine. Like the reason for betting here is that you don't have any diamonds. He can still have four X. He can have any six. He can have an eight. He can have any diamonds. And so if I think a player is not going to be check raising me very often. So like in theory, the way this board should operate is it goes check, check, king comes. Who's the king good for? Uh, better for me. Better for you, right? So what is what should his range do a lot of? Like check calling. Uh, before the calling, he should do a lot of checking, right? Yeah, check. So if he's doing a lot of checking, what does that lead him to do with his like nutted hands? Check raise. Exactly. So the way yeah. this spot should operate is it goes check, check, king. King really good for you. He should check really frequently. When he checks really frequently, it retains high equity hands into his checking range, mm -hmm. which means that on the turn, when you bet, he should be check raising a ton because you have a lot of kings. He has a lot of straights and two pairs and things like that, okay. as well as bluffs. And so, so what kind of size, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. What kind of size would we be betting then on here if we de-bet? So the 70 I, think like a, I think a pretty big size. Okay. I think like a 3.6 or something like that, like a two thirds. Okay. Cool. Now, okay. in theory, and if this play is really good, I would never bet this hand. I would just pure check. But I think in game, what happens is he's supposed to check a lot and check raise a lot, but he bets with his value hands a lot. So if this player is just going to bet seven, five, seven, four, six, eight, you know, stuff like that, then when he checks, his range becomes a lot weaker. So I would look for that distinction in game where it's like, if you see people betting their value a lot in spots where they should be check raising their value, it okay. means that you get to bet for protection way thinner because when he checks, it means that you're not going to get check raised off your equity very often. Um, so from a fundamentals point of view, you're playing this hand perfectly, right? But from like an exploitative point of view, you should look for spots where if you think he's not going to check raise you, we would love to bet here. Like if, if you yeah. told me this guy would never check raise us, we should bet every time, right? Because yeah. we get value from his draws and he can't raise yeah. us, right? So so that that's kind of just a, a quick little note. Check, check, ace five, nice. Um, I would just small bet, but I, I, but I wouldn't be surprised if you do some checking on this board. Uh, now, I wouldn't bluff this hand. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, this is the first kind of thing I've seen where I'm like, okay, I, I don't think this one's right. Uh, so if you're betting this hand, how, what does that mean about your overall seat betting strategy? Are you betting like really frequently or like not so frequently? Uh, frequently. Yeah. Right. And with the small size, which I, which I think is good and fine. Yeah. Um, so when you're betting really frequently, what do you end up on the turn with as your overall range? Uh, a lot of air. A lot of air, exactly. Yeah. And what does he get to do when he's facing the bet on the flop? He gets to just call. Just call. But what, what happens to his air? With, what in terms of his type of hands or? Uh, well, like what happens to his like air air hands? Like you uh, retain if, your air because you bet. What his is air will fold. His air folds, right? He'll keep his marginal hands, whether it's a pair or in the good shots or... Perfect. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Perfect. So in this spot, what happens is flop, you have a big equity advantage. You push your equity advantage with a small bet. He folds his air. And so his equity loses the whole bottom portion of it. And now okay. it only has things that connect well with the board. Right. But you still have air. Right. So the equities on the turn run really close. He actually probably has an equity advantage on the turn. Because you okay. still have so much air and you're on the button. So you're opening wide. So you actually have quite a bit of air, right? So from a fundamentals point of view, you bet small, pushing equity, great. He calls, 
equity shift on the turn because you have your air still. What should be your turn barreling strategy with those with those things in mind? Um, I suppose I suppose you probably should only barrel if you get something which is going to help maybe like a, a 10 for a gut shot or something like that because you're going to have a lot of air. Yeah, yeah, I, I typically agree with that. What what size should you use and how frequent should you bet? Um, not often and a larger size. Perfect, exactly, right? It's like now we have, now the advantage that we're going to be pushing in position is, an, is a high equity advantage, you know? Yeah. We're not, we're not like, like on the flop, we bet small and frequently because we're pushing an equity advantage. Okay. We don't have an equity advantage anymore. So we can't bet small and we can't bet frequently, right? So we need to bet really polarized and large in the spot because mm -hmm. we're pushing, a. we have ace king, he can't have it. We have king queen, he doesn't have all of it. We have as much king jack as he does probably, maybe more suited version. We have yeah. more pocket jacks, you know what I mean? So now we're pushing our nut advantage. Our nutted hands, we have a little bit more high in nut hands. So we're building our turn strategy around that. And so if we're betting not frequently and large, it means that our bluffs need to have really good properties, right? Okay. If we're betting really frequently in the spot, then maybe this hand fits into a bet. But does our hand have good bluffing properties? Definitely no. not, right? You know, I mean, you knew, you already kind of alluded to what hands yeah, have yeah, good yeah, yeah. properties. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Which ones are going to be really good here? Well, it's going to be ones that unblock his ace highs because yeah. we want him to fold ace highs on the turn if he has some. Yeah. So we want to have like 10 queen, 10 nine. Um, we want to have seven, eight of spades, eight, you know, eight, nine of spades, nine, 10 of yeah. spades, uh, queen, nine There's of spades, a, queen, eight of spades. Yeah. Like, you know, those are the bluffs we want to have on this turn. Because yeah. you need to have equity. You need to have equity. So all that makes and I sense. I guess it yeah, it makes sense. And I guess I, I remember in the game thinking, I'm going to do it because I never do it. And I I'll always have a lot of air. So I'm yeah. going to bet because I so that's how my mind was thinking. It's just obviously yeah. it was it was thinking it at the wrong time because it wasn't the right ball to do it with or the right hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and that's that's where you have to get to. Right. It's such a weird yeah. thing because I, I do the same thing. And no matter how good you get at poker, you're going to kind of have it in your head. That's like, oh, he thinks that I think that I, you know what I mean? Like I never, yeah, bluff yeah. Him, so I, you know, it's always going to be a part of you, but you always have to recenter on trying to make the right play. And yeah, so like, for know. you, if you just focus so uh, like with such clarity, you know, about what's the right decision, you're going to lose the fact that you're a little bit overcautious because you're so focused on making the right decision that if it's a good hand to bluff, you bluff, you know? Okay. And so instead of saying, I know I'm overcautious, I'm going to bluff here. You should be so yeah. focused on what's the right play here. I don't yeah, care yeah. what, like what my tendencies are. What do I think is the right play? You know? Yeah. So, and hey. I guess as well, it's like, if I say something like that, I'm in game and that happens, I sh that should be like a trigger for me to think actually that needs to, I need to, actually think about the hand as opposed to how I'm feeling. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Now you just have to give up, yeah. I'm glad you, I know it sucks because he has the nine jack, but you just have to give up. Yeah. Like when you bet twice, you need to have a spade, like you need to have a spade in your hand, you need to have something. Yeah. Good. This is fine. Play check, check, good. Check, check, good, perfect. Um, I don't know how to play this spot. <laughs> button, versus, <laughs> button versus small blind call when they should never call. It's like, uh, yeah. I would just play check check probably. Yeah. Like if we think about the, his range, it's calling here. It's probably just like pairs and like pretty good suited nice. stuff off super Broadway yeah. stuff. And it's like, yeah. what what better hands are you gonna make fold on the flop? It's like he's not gonna fold king jack probably. He's not gonna fold king queen to a small bet. So it's like. I, I would just play check check, um, but it's okay. You just go bet bet. I don't hate it. You have the 10 of spades, which is like good properties, and now he will start yeah. holding ace highs and better king highs. But yeah, it is kind of a whatever hand. This hand uh, is like such a small part of the game tree. Yeah. You know, but, button raise, small blind flies. That doesn't matter too much. Um, I assume this board gets like, 
I think that we want to have big bets on this board. Um, but I think that the big bets are going to want to come from like queen, jack, king, jack, ace, jack, queens, kings. Okay. Yeah. And then when we big bet with our bluffs, we want it to be high equity stuff. So we would bet yeah. five, four of hearts for big size or, uh, you know, king, queen of spades would be a good one to bet for a big size because like, okay. you know, we turn a lot of equity. We have two overs to their jacks. Yeah. Um, so this hand, I think, probably fits into a small bet size. Um, I, I like this a lot. We're just like kind of pushing equity, targeting is there. Good. Good. I like your check check. I would just check down. Perfect. I like that hand a lot. Um, same guy who's like calling you a lot. He's probably pretty loose yeah. and splashy. Um, the way that I approach these types of players in general is I push my high equity stuff really frequently. Um, I check a lot of my marginal stuff. And then I go really thin for value. Uh, and okay. I think that's like typically pretty reasonable because like we don't want to be just like no equity bluffing in spots because like he could have king eight offsuit, you know? So we can't just like run it with ace five in, in all the spots and stuff like that because he can just have like a wide range. It's going to make pretty strong hands. But with that said, he's going to call really wide, I think too, in general. Yeah. Like anybody who's like over flat in the small blind, in my mind, typically over calls for a slot. But I, I mean that, might not be right for everybody, but just how I approach it. So I, I really like this hand. Nice. Both those are perfect to me. I like this. Your hand probably mixes forwards, yeah. That's fine. Um, queen jack nine, you have the ace four, no equity. Right, play check, check, yeah. Cool. Over call is good, fold. I'd call one. It is a huge bet from an, a really tight range. Like I get it. And yeah, um, and that's yeah, that's why I folded it because it was yeah. a big bet. And I just I was like, if either bet a little bit smaller with a call, and I thought yeah. it just seems too strong. And you because have a player it wasn't behind. Yeah. yeah. So so all those things are pretty reasonable. The the pushback for me is like you're gonna play the pot in position, so it's gonna be hard for you to under realize your equity. You make yeah. a really like tricky two pair when the ace comes um and it's a spot where if he's bluffing he'll want to keep bluffing really often like if he has like king king ten of hearts or something okay. um and you turn club draws and you turn straight draws so i think you might just have too much equity to fold like if i just told you get king queen queen jack and kings here you might just still have to call because like you just yeah. turn so much equity and like you have a pretty good amount of implied odds where like if a three or an ace comes, you're really happy. If a club yeah. comes, you're pretty happy. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, folding's fine here. I get, I obviously get why you did it, but I would, I would look but for that. It, yeah. Okay. Also, I was going to say looking for like, identifying those spots when I'm playing to take yeah. advantage of them. Yeah. And yeah. If you're not doing it. You're not doing anything but wrong by calling with that kind of hand so yeah yeah exactly we can just turn so much equity in different spots okay no. cool folding there's good calling here is like a little loose but it's probably okay oh okay this is a mistake um we'll, we'll, we'll actually walk me through your approach to this spot so i think i bet bigger because it needed a lot of protection and because it was quite dynamic. So you had the jack nine, obviously it's two hearts. I figured a lot of cards could come out, which could hurt me. Okay, I agree. But I, I, I probably wasn't thinking about the fact that, you know, obviously he could already, he could have a lot of hands that could call me. Yeah, yeah. So hmm. I'm trying to think about how I feel about this because like in these spots, what's actually going to happen is that twos with a heart are just going to bluff a lot. Okay. Like you kind of bet the flop for protection, but like on a lot of runouts, it, it ends up being like a really good bluff candidate because you're unblocking all of their like sixes, sevens, eights, nine, eight, nine, ten, jack, ten, jack, eight, like all the middling cards, you kind of get to fold by the river. Um, so if you would have told me like, I want to bet big here because I'm going to run it in this spot. And I'm going to just go bet that jam on any heart turn or any low card where they end up having like king, queen, king, 10, a lot, you know, nine, 10, yeah. all, the, all the middling stuff. Then I'd be like, I'd start with a small bet, but I don't, I don't hate it. You know, 
But when you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm betting for protection in this spot. I think we want to go small. And I actually think even when we're bluffing, I think we want to go small in general, keep their range wide on the flop and then start piling on turns and rivers because the hands that we're targeting to fold here, we're just trying to make them fold like ace four of clubs, you know, ace six of spades, like random low equity shit that we just want him to fold. Because when we put this much money in, we're kind of just like, allowing him to get a bigger pot and then it go check, 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 check when he has six or seven, eights, nine, 10, nine, seven. So it actually is better for him for us to bet big because he's going to call all those hands on the flop, you know? So we end up putting more money against those hands and getting about the same amount of protection because like, he's not going to fold King queen. He's not mm-hmm. going to fold ace King, ace queen, any hard draw, ace 10 of diamonds probably doesn't fold, you know? So I don't think that like we're getting that much more protection when we bet big versus small in this spot. And so we end up just putting a lot more money in versus his like marginal range that we're doing pretty bad against in general. Okay. That that kind of makes perfect sense to be fair. Okay, cool. So like I think like rule of thumb in general, your protection bets almost always fit into a small size. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah. And I guess I I think part of what I was doing was I was fitting this larger size into the wrong type of texture board. So obviously we'd spoke before where it was like, you know, say it's like a, you know, two, six, eight board and you've got, you know, pocket fives, you might, on certain pairs, you want to get bigger for protection. I but I was doing, I was doing it on the wrong type of board gotcha. with the wrong pair. So yeah. I think I was just trying to fit something in. Yeah. Yeah, that, cool. I, that um, I'd learned, that but it sense. wasn't the right right board to do it on. So I've got to learn the right yeah. board so, to so do. Let me okay. let me test you on this then, because I because I like it. Let's say okay. in this spot you have any two cards. Okay. Okay. You have a whole range, one hundred percent of hands. Yeah. What hand wants to bet biggest? So I would say your. It made something like uh, pocket fives, the first set, something like two pair jack nine, because they need, you want to get value in now before the ball changes on the turn. Both of those are reasonable, but it's not not quite there. Okay. <laughs> Let's, I'll give you, um, I'll give you one, one more guess. Educated guess, because um, they're both those are reasonable. Totally. Yeah. I would, I would say, well, the first thing I was going to say, but I didn't because so I weren't certain, was, you know, your your flush draws, um, like your high equity flush draws, like 10-8 suited or 6-7 suited. So, or... yeah, those those mostly, that's reasonable, like you're, you're sharp because like that's kind of, that was what we were talking about in the last board where like yeah. when you split bet sizes, your bigger bet size, one, like your bluffs there want to bet, want to be the higher equity yeah. stuff. So that part's sharp. But... The hands that drive that big bet strategy are mostly your value hands. Okay. Um, and then you kind of fit in fit in your bluffs. That's, that's the way my brain thinks about it, at least. Because like okay. when we have ace four of hearts here, it doesn't really matter what we bet. The EV is going to be pretty reasonable on the flop because they're going to continue other heart draws. Like, like the EV of ace four of hearts, it comes from making a heart, right? And so when we bet small and we make a heart, or we have big and we make a heart, the EV is going to be good no matter what. You know what I mean? So it doesn't actually matter that much. But if we have the whole deck in this exact spot, the one hand that wants to go biggest is going to be queen of spades, queen of clubs. Okay. Because okay, we're, yeah, yeah. we're unblocking their top pairs. We need the most protection. We don't have any hearts. And so yeah. if we have a hand that wants to bet huge, it's the pair that's right over the top pair. And you're going to see that that's like pretty consistent. Now, yeah. the fives and the jack nine, those are both reasonable answers. You know what I mean? Both of those would want to bet big too. But fives need a lot less protection than two black queens. And jack nine also needs a little bit less protection than queens and blocks top pairs. You see what I'm saying? So like yeah, the yeah. way that I would, I would try to get like your mind to kind of approach it is like queens does want protection. And so you would think, okay, well, queens wants protection if it fits into a small size. But it's not like, it's kind of like a duality between protection bets 
and driving value. And so twos, we're literally purely betting for protection. If he has three, four of clubs, we want him to fold because he has two overs to our hand. You know what I mean? But queens, we're, we want to push value as much as possible right away and protection. And so okay. that drives a big bet size. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, no, that, so it's kind of like in the like the last time we spoke, we were on about like pocket tens and nines, where you know, obviously, you got say an eight, seven, four board, a lot no, can change. Yeah. So, you want to make a bet, and then obviously, if a king or ace, like that hand I sent you over, if it comes out, you can still go for thin value on the turn. Perfect, yeah, yeah, that's you that's exactly that cool, yeah, cool. So, in this spot with the twos, I would just bet small, he folds, okay. so it's fine, but and then when you bet small. On any heart, I think this hand's going to be a really good bluff candidate and just bl okay. bluff with the twos because, like, you have sneaky outs. Like, you're two, two of spades, two of clubs outs. Like, that's 5% of the time you're just going to river a set. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, one in 20, you just get to value that river, which is pretty sick. Um, I would play check, check. Betting's fine, reasonable. 10 5 open, I like. Um, I would bet small, good. Small bets. Nice. Okay. This is going to be a mixed frequency. So, yeah. so I'm okay with this one. It has equity. Now, your spade is bad for you, and having no diamond isn't great for you. If you had a diamond in your hand, it's like for sure you bet turn. Um, this well, one's going to be mixed, but I still think it's fine. Um, I do... Should I a bit smaller on that one? So I, I think no. it's like you no, that's fine on that. Yeah. That's because cool. like what are you targeting? When you bet turn, like what are you trying to make them fold? Like I'm guessing like obviously the any queen. Yeah, like you're trying to make a bold queen five of hearts, you yeah. know what I mean? Qu queen yeah. seven of hearts. Okay, so yeah, like yeah. you need to kind of like start polarizing around his queens and and, and use a reasonable bit, like reasonable size. Okay. Yeah, I, I that hand's good. It's not the best candidate, but it's a fine candidate. Yeah. It's way better than the A70 from, so, from the other one. And barreling turns is like a really big deal, honestly. Like a lot of yeah. win rate is going to come from you playing the button <clears throat> and playing sharply on turns and rivers when the pot's yeah. biggest, you know. Um, check, check, check's good. Fold, easy. It's fine. You could check or bet. I would bet. I don't like the size. Um, I I know why you did it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a board where like your ten's not that strong. You need him to yeah. call with a pretty weak hand. But when you bet this size, you kind of tell him what you have. Yeah. So like if he's a good player, what's he gonna do? Yeah, he's me. He's just gonna raise. He's gonna pot it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, the way I approach rivers is I never in position bet less than half pot. Okay. Because if it's not worth half pot in value, it's just better to check in my mind. Uh, and, and, and like theoretically too, to, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to so be yeah. honest, I like, yeah, I like that. I like that statement because it, again, it gives me something to think about. And a lot of the times I'm like, I want to get a bet, but I'm like, I don't want to bet like 50% in case I get yeah. raised. But again, it's that whole thing. You're not always, if you get raised, you fold, you know, you're probably beat. Yeah. But you're going to get value from a, a lot of hands. For sure. For sure. Especially because there's no small blood in the spot. So like, He's going to have a lot more threes than he should normally. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He's going to have a lot more ace highs that might feel a little bit curious on the river, you know, because like you bet small on six, six, three, you check the 10 of clubs, then the four of diamonds comes and you bet half pot. It's like yeah. if I'm sitting there with ace nine with a club or a diamond, it's like it feels like a reasonable bluff catching. You know what I mean? Okay. That's uh, cool. So yeah. yeah, I would go for that. Wow. He had the 10 queen. So the, I mean, what would you do in, your, in this spot with 10 queen? You could punish this guy hard and just raise your 10 queen for value. Yeah. You know, just like make a small raise and it's going to put you in a rough spot. Yeah. Uh, and especially as you've got a queen of clubs as well. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's blocking your flushes. I mean, but like you're not going to check back flushes that often, but yeah, it's certainly yeah. true. I love, I love this bet size. This is definitely a big improvement from last session where it's like cool. some people, I know it seems so silly, but some people make this seven or eight. And like yeah. if you make a seven or eight, you really start to like limit their range. And like when we have ace jack on king jack two, like we don't want to limit their range. We want to keep them wide, you know. Yeah. Uh, perfect check check. 
It's a rough spot. You need to be good one and four here, and he can just have like yeah. ace 10, 10 queen, but I think I would fold. It's a good bluff catcher, though. Yeah. At least a reasonable bluff catcher. But you have better ones in your range. Like we have queens with a club that would play this way. We have ace of clubs, jack that would play yeah. this way. We might even have some kings. Like you might check back like king 10 on the turn, king queen on the turn, possibly. Um, I think that those mostly bet, but like you might have some king. So I think folding here is pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a spot where like you could call and it would be okay, but I think you're probably like not quite getting the right price and your range just has like some yeah. better hands. I do remember it because it was a tough one because I was thinking I am getting good odds. I only, like, I only need to win it set. But then I was like, because there's three clubs, there's two kings, and I was just like, I couldn't really, and because of you could potentially have, say, queen 10, yeah. I was like, I think there's probably more value hands beating me than... Than potential bluffs. Yeah, I think, I yeah. think that's pretty sharp. I think that's pretty sharp. That's one thing that I don't think you have a big error on. Like, I don't think you really, like, over call, Like, you're not curious. You're not, like, overly yeah. curious where, like, oh, I need to see his hand. Like, a lot of people have that, and I don't think you have that, which, which is really good. No. But the way I see it is if, if I don't call, it's because I think I'm beat. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's, uh... Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's perfect. I think that that's like a really, really sharp way to do it. And I actually think that that's like pretty uncommonly sharp. Like a lot of yeah. people don't have that. And I think it's a, a, a really good skill. Perfect. Um, check, check. You have a really great bluffing candidate. <laughs> you know what I mean? See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a potential like you could re-raise in. Yeah, I mean, right? It's like yeah. you have you're blocking the king of spades from yeah. his flushes, and you're blocking the eight from him turning ace eight. Yeah. For his boats. And but I, he I know. he overbet. So it's like yeah. if I was playing a super high, you know, like a, a super big game where I wanted to play perfectly, I would just randomize and I would jam here like ten percent of the time. You know, because okay. like it's a it's a spot where you're gonna end up having a lot of marginal stuff here, uh, like a lot of potential bluff candidates, and this is a really good one. But it doesn't mean you like talking about like uh, tendencies. My tendency would be to look at this hand and raise every single time, okay. right? And that's a huge error because that means I'm gonna over bluff the hell out of this spot, and he can just call me with like ace ten of hearts and just print money versus me. Um, and so, like, yeah, I think it's it's good to understand that it's a good candidate, and yeah. then it's good to bluff with it at a small frequency. And and yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, and I think that's what would be something I need to learn is identifying the ones which are good because that's not something I've got in my game. I could never see myself. Really? I know in the future that I might do, but I obviously as I learn to do it, I'll probably do it. But at this precise moment in time, I could never see myself doing it. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, as I learn what hands are good for doing it, yeah. yes, I'll be confident enough to try it. Cool. Cool. Do you, just, do you, yeah, like when you, like now looking at it in review, do you see why it's such a good candidate? Yeah, yeah. And what you said makes perfect sense as to why. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Just, just look for it every once in a while. And then if you don't pull the trigger, you'll still know it's a good candidate and it'll still be good for you, you know? Yeah. See, this is, okay. So this is a good little leak we found today. When you want protection, you bet big. But in yeah. general, we're just looking for him to fold six, seven of diamonds. Yeah. You know, so what, what's it going to take for him to fold seven high here? Tiny bets. So that, that's going to be, a, I think, a good fix to some of these in-position spots. Okay, cool. Nice. That's good. The other thing that, one, one thing that happens a lot is like, I've worked with some people before who have similar things where they bet big. And it of, oftentimes leads them to saying things like, yeah, it just feels like they always have it versus me on the river. And it's like, well, yeah, you're making them fold really tightly on the other streets. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like when you bet huge on the flop and then it goes check, check, and they bet, they're going to have it a lot because they're going to yeah. fold the flop infinitely when you bet so big, you know? Whereas if you bet small and you keep their range wide, you make them show up on the river with more bluffs. You know what I mean? You force them to because they, they know they have to call wider on the flop, you know? Uh, which is good for you overall yeah and i guess what's interesting is obviously the first time we spoke i didn't have any big bets on the flop but 
but actually the big flip bet, bets I'm putting on the flop now are the wrong ones. Yeah, well, so some are still good. You know, the Queen yeah, Jack yeah. was good, but yeah, but yeah. yeah. So we'll, and that, that's why I wanted to hammer in like, which one's best here? It would be the Queens. It would be the Ace Jack. You know, yeah. the Fives and Jack Nine is still good. You know, it's still good to good to get those in there. Um, no, it's just Jack Jack. You win. Perfect. Um, small. You could click this too if you wanted, but I think calling's good. Um, what's the SPR? Same. I would bet like a big size, probably. Pots 50, you have 85 back. I would bet like 27 or something. That's Six, 16's okay. It's it's not a big, I mean, like the EV is whatever, right? But yeah, my concern is this. When he chuck raises flop, he might be like trying to figure out where he's at with a hand like ace jack or ace queen. Okay. And when he checks the turn, it really makes me feel like he has a hand like ace jack or ace queen or ace 10. And I think that people are going to call the turn and then fold the river with that hand a lot. Okay. And so if that's the case, we want to bet bigger on the turn because so we can get, extract more value. Slash, so he folds, so he just had like four or five or something, maybe. But uh, but we want to extract more value from those hands that might make big folds in the river. Okay. Uh, so again, it's just like we, like you said, like targeting specific hands that can call. And obviously, sometimes they're going to fold, but if they if you're getting ace ten or ace jack or ace queen to call, yeah. Well, like I think that time. his like his call, like let's talk about like the elasticity of his calling range here. He check raised flop and then checked. It's like what hand type is going to check call? And then secondly, what hand type is going to check call 16 that would fold to 25? Yeah. And it's like, I can't think of many hands they're going to call a 16 bet on the turn, but then fold to a 25. But like, I, can you can you think of many? Like, unless he's folding ace 10, which would be pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I can't. To be honest, yeah. I think it's like you said, they would be calling a 25, 27 big buying bet. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's a lot of spots where that's not true, but in this spot, I think it, it probably is yeah. it is somewhat true. Your bet's obviously still fine. Um, but I think it could be slightly better. Folding here is okay, but it's again, I, I would probably just continue. You have a lot of equity, you're in position. You're definitely gonna like, call there with like a backdoor flush draw, right? Like yeah. if you have ace jack of yeah. diamonds. Yeah, cool. cool. I, I don't think it's a big deal if, if you're forty out then, but uh. I, I that was a I remember this one because it was a misclick because I was going to raise him. Gotcha. And I was doing something else at the time, and That's I was right. like, "Damn!" Yeah, it happens. It happens. And I was really so annoyed. One one thing that I just want to talk about because like we for I don't see this very much, but in this game we've already seen it a few times where the small blind just yeah. calls versus the button. Let's just yeah. talk briefly about it from a theoretical point of view. Like, how much are you opening on the button? Roughly, what percentage? Um, probably about fifty-five percent. Yeah, perfect. And so, what would the small blind be calling if they're calling a button raise? Um, how, how, often? Most, how often? Well, they should never be calling. Agreed. But like, let's just say, because we're seeing it a bunch. Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna guess at their range, what would your like estimate be for what percentage? Like small, small, like five percent. Okay, perfect, right? So it's gonna be like a condensed range of like maybe five, ten percent, twelve percent if they're like really splashy. Yeah. But you have a fifty-five percent range, and yeah. so from a theoretical point of view, like one thing that you need to be careful of is like you're gonna have the nut advantage a lot, but you're almost yeah. never gonna have the equity advantage because like they're just calling pretty good hands, and their range is just pretty tight. You know what I mean? Like. You have 10 5 suited, they don't have 10 5 suited. You have okay. king nine off suit, king eight off suit, they probably don't have that, you know. So, I think it's natural to want to push a lot of small bets against when you're the imposition raiser. But in this weird spot that we keep seeing, I think the, the way you should approach it is by checking a lot, checking back a lot, and then just start pushing big bets really frequently. Because, like, okay. when you have Jack Queen here, he has sixes. He has fives. He has ace four, ace three. He has jack nine. When you have king jack, you want to start putting money in the pot. You know what I mean? Because you're up against a tight condensed range 
that's gonna they can call big bets. Um, so that's how I would approach this in general is like, don't do as much small betting, do more checking and then do more big betting because okay. your range has so much air and their range is just like pretty tight condensed. Okay. I like that. Cool. And yeah, miss, miss clicks happen. Although, I mean, King three suited is pretty wide. A tiny yeah. bet is fine. Call. Wow. You lucked out. No club on the river. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Checking here is good. The spot's close. I think if we, I think I like raise the best kind of. If you had ace of hearts, king of hearts, I would say for sure raise. Okay. Because there's just so much we can get value from right away that we don't want him to you know, get to see the river as the aggressor and then just check forward river. Yeah. Um, calling's fine. And, wow. yeah. and I think, and I think I call just because it was a comfortable thing. So I, I felt more comfortable calling than raising. Yeah. But obviously sometimes you've got to do raise because it's the right logical move, haven't you? And it's not about how you're feeling. It's about... yeah. Yeah, because like in general, I think you're sitting here and like you have a good on like you the way that you think about the game is good, Ben. Like, like I I like the way that you're approaching the game. And I think that you're gonna beat the game for like a good, a good big blind rate. Um and so the like you know in this spot that you're gonna be beat sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he just is gonna have sets or two pairs and you're gonna your hand's not the nuts, right? But your hand does need a lot of protection. Uh, yeah. so that's where it's like if you have two hearts in your hand, you allow him to have like a seven of clubs yeah. you know what i mean like a seven of clubs yeah. has a lot of equity and we would love just to raise right now and put him in a really rough spot with that type of hand um, and say you do say you've got the ace king, king of hearts there and you raise are they are the players who have got clubs less likely to push all in because it's a turn is that more of a are they more likely to call because it's a turn whereas on the flop they might might push, push all in. yeah yeah i mean that that's the way i see it like if he's sitting here with a seven of clubs and you raise him, I just don't think he's going to bluff with a hand yeah. like that. You know, if he has six, seven of clubs, I just don't think he's going to bluff. I think he's going to call yeah. and just try to get there. You know, um, obviously if you're up against a player who's going to be doing a lot of jamming, it's really rough, but I don't think you can get, I don't think you need jammed on that much. Okay. And then I really like this race size. This to me is perfect. You leave mm -hmm. yourself the out where it's like, if he jams, you just fold. It sucks, but you just mm -hmm. fold, you know? Um, but yeah, so he ends up folding. It's interesting. And that is something, obviously, I learned from the last time where you were like, very smaller, and I've been looking at those spots and like trying to identify them. And like, you know, cool. you can get value from like worse aces or, you know, other hands. Yeah. And yeah. obviously, it gives you the opportunity if they push to push worse hands or to give you a chance to fold if they've got like the, a better the hands. Yeah. yeah that's perfect man I, I really really like this hand overall and i wasn't and obviously because it was river i wasn't scared about raising it i felt really comfortable doing it cool cool yeah 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 and i mean turn is fine you know once again like that some of these things that we're talking about like i just want to kind of get them in your head so that you're thinking yeah, yeah. about them in game but like your your line is totally fine you know what i mean like I, and and raising rivers is just like great. If you call the river, then it's like, ugh, you know, too a little yeah, too yeah. cautious. Like that you you left a little bit of money on the table because he's gonna have ace ten at some frequency. Yeah. You know, he's gonna have those types of hands. Check, it's stuff check. like this gives me confidence. I actually go. I am kind of on the right path in terms of for sure. Thinking yeah, I, I, I like this stuff honestly. And like, if you can, the way that I think about six max in general is like, if you can play button as the pre-flop raiser and big blind against the button raiser you're going to be pretty strong because like okay. when you open the button 55 percent, it is so much harder to develop good turn barreling ranges and good river strategies compared to when you open the low jack with 16 percent of hands it's like yeah good luck not finding equity on turns you know what i mean you have 16 percent of hands you don't have yeah, a yeah. seven offsuit you don't have you know fours and twos and threes like like you end up just having 
really strong hands. And so it becomes really easy. Like if you can get really sharp at button versus big blind, you're going to be incredible at low jack versus big blind because it's going to be way easier to play 16% of hands versus 55, you know? Yeah. So that's why, that's why I'm happy to see some of these things because like if I can look and tell that you're doing it on the button, you're going to do it in the cutoff. You're going to do it in the hijack and you're going to do it in the low jack because it's easier, cool. you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like we're looking at like the hardest, the hardest part of it. And I really like your ISO versus limbs. Oh, why'd you do that? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, eight. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, good. That's why, yeah, this yeah. is fine. This is fine. My bad. I was thinking he had a hundred bigs and you just started. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's really usual. And then I saw the thing. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Because he was doing it every hand where he, he was just calling everything and then just folding. And it's just like. Cool. Yeah, yeah. This is totally fine. This is totally fine. Overcall. I like your overcall range too. Thank you. Excuse me, sorry. It's all right. You're That's tired. Fine. Yeah, yeah. I've been up like, been up, been staying up pretty late, unfortunately, but got, got to find the hours to study and, and all that stuff. So <laughs> been, uh, a few late ones in a row, but that's all right. Uh, but, but your overcall range is really good. It's like cool. very pair heavy. You know, I, yeah. it's really good to see you not overcalling like King Queen O, Queen Jack O type stuff. You know, so I, I really like that. Um, this bet's okay. Uh, once again, I would go even smaller, but it, but it's it's okay. Uh, we have to play checks now. We just lose. Pretty good flop. Big bet. It's fine. It's fine. I, I would typically, it's so like, he raises, you call. Queen eight six. What's his strategy supposed to look like, roughly? Well, he should be betting range, mm. like small. I'm not sure about that. Your range is pretty tight when you call on the button versus. Oh yeah, player. yeah. So, like, because your range is pretty tight, I actually think he should be checking a decent amount. Okay. Like, what what should he do with jacks, right? What should he do with like, even like aces? Aces with a heart and a diamond. Like, I think those hands want to check raise a lot. Okay. Um, so the way that I would approach a spot out of position is I would check a decent amount and then I would big bet a lot because I don't think I really want to small bet tens or like eight, seven or ace, eight. I think I would rather just check call with those types of hands versus yeah. the button call it. versus big blind. Of course, I'm going to, I'm going to bet um, at least some of the marginal stuff, but I think out of position in this spot, he wants to do a decent amount of checking. Okay. But to be fair, your strategy here is correct for the range that you think he has. If you think okay. he should be betting small and often, it means that when he checks, he has a medium equity marginal range, which means that we want to bet a polarized range in position. Okay. And so we're differing on what we think the opponent's range is but your strategy is good for what you think it is. Yeah. And so that okay, right. to me is most important. Um, yeah. In my mind, in general, if you think that they're going to check a lot, you should bet small. So okay. in six max, when you're at the in position caller, you're going to bet small in general, five or 10 times as likely as you're going to bet big on the flop. Because when you're the in position caller versus the out of position raiser, your range is pretty tight. Their range is pretty tight. They are out of position. They have to do a lot of checking in general. Now, there's plenty of boards where you should be betting big and, and, and whatnot. And so this is okay. And I'm fine with it. But if you don't know big or small as the in-position caller against the pre call raiser, almost, almost always small. Okay. Okay. Because that allows them like to check, develop check raising ranges, okay. which is exactly what we want when we have pocket sixes. Yeah. Okay, and that yeah, again, that makes perfect sense as well. That's something that I can, you know, put in my head straight away. Nice, nice, nice. And, and your hand type to bet big is is like fine and good once again. So that's why it's like it's like it's fine, you know. But I think it can be a little bit, a little bit sharper. Same type of thing, right? It's like we're betting for protection with this hand. We have the middling pair between nine and seven. It's like if I bet, I'm just gonna bet small. Okay. Obviously, have to fold there. Same thing here. If we bet tiny, checks are good. We just check and win. Nice. Um, 
both sizes are fine here. Good. It's pretty interesting bet size. Yeah, Six is obviously very polar. He ends up having a lot of draws. I mean, you can't fold this in theory. You know what I mean? Like, if this is a really good player, yeah. your hand's too good. You have to call. But I, I think it's 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 fine. I, I don't see an issue with it. Overcalling the ace five, it's fine. I'd probably just still bet small, but checking's okay. Oof. Yeah, that was... hand. Yeah. So so that's why I would bet. So like, not that's why as in the river. That's why as in they're still gonna have kings in their range. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like they have such bad ranges that like they never call here. So that's why I would just bet small because like they're gonna have kings. They're gonna have king queen. He could have ace king and he's looking to check raise, you know. Uh imagine if he has like ace king of hearts and he's like, I'm blocking the ace that has the five. I'm just gonna when facing this small bet, he's gonna look at the small bet and be like, he just always has like sixes or sevens here. You know, yeah. he just always has like king jack here. And so he just raises ace king. Whereas when we check. It's a lot less likely that we get a lot of money in the pot. Yeah. So in general, especially multi-way, I really don't ever slow play. Almost okay. ever. Right. Yeah. Actually, that's what I heard on one of the things I was listening to the other day. I was listening to a, a class, and it was nice. like never slow play multi-way pots. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It yeah. is. It, it is very rare. It is very very yeah. rare. The rest of the hands fine. Tiny is good. Good. So this is the same thing, right? This is like versus this weird small blind call that we keep seeing. Yeah. I would just pot it. You know, I would just bet huge because like okay. he's going to have just like suited aces. He's going to have nine, 10. He's going to have eight, seven, like eight, eight X. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would just bet really big. And he's going to fold fives for any price. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this sand type. I would probably click it, yeah. This is I, I like this. I like this a lot. Nice. Good bet size. Check track. Perfect. You, you need to bluff yeah. this hand now. The, this is the exact hand type you want to have to bluff. Yeah. Uh, and when we bet here, what are we trying to make them fold? Um, like ace highs and um, exactly. maybe like five. I, I don't even think he fold five, there, would he? Um. If you bet huge, you might, but uh, I think we're targeting ace highs, but like ace we, need to, high. okay. we need to look like we have a four, you know? Yeah. So I would bet like eight here, like maybe seven. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I he ends up having the five, there. yeah. And, I, rough... do, and I, I knew it was a spot where I should be betting. Yeah. And again, it was just, you know, that uncomfortable feeling of For like, sure. Especially, especially in this spot where it really just feels like they're going to call every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just feels like, it just really feels like they're going to call so much. And that's why you need to use such a big bet size. But yeah, I would just bet like. I yeah, so I think I was probably bet like 125% on that. Yeah. Um, but do you think he would have folded the five or? I don't know. Is it just, it, it's irrelevant. It would have been, it would, even if he had called, it would have been a good. Exactly. That's how I feel. Really like play. Okay. Because he has a five this time, but there's going to be other times when he just has king queen of spades. Yeah, yeah. King 10 of spades. Like he's going to have king highest too as well. Like. You bet so small on the flop, right? As you should. Yeah. And so, like, what would you do if you had king queen of spades here? You're gonna call. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? King ten of spades. Like, you're gonna call. And so, like, on the river, when you bet 125, percent he might call his fives, but he's he's yeah. almost definitely gonna fold king queen of spades. Yeah. You know. So you end up you you end up getting full, play, en enough folds. Uh, tiny monotone tiny is good. Queen six opens really good. This hand can do whatever. Um, hmm. I think we want more equity when we bet this. Okay. I like your check in this spot. I think we want more equity. Your yeah. six is not so good. It's blocking him from having like six, five, six, nine, six, ten. Uh, and your spades aren't super good because it's blocking him from having king, queen of spades that would call fold, king, jack of spades that would call fold. So I think that in general, we just want to barrel like four five, our own six ten, our own nine eight nine ten, jack nine, jack ten, and then heart draws. I think okay. that's probably how the spot operates. And nice, we just make the queen. He is so big. 
I would probably just follow. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think I'm following that all day long to that. Yeah, it's close. I mean, it's close. He can, he can still have plenty of bluffs, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. But like, no, my cautious nature. Yeah. And that's so this, what I mean. This is a great example of when you should raise the turn. It's like 10 4 3, check, check, jack. He bets this size. He has so yeah. much like jack 9, jack 8, jack 7, jack 6, jack 5. 10 king, 10 queen, you know, so much marginal stuff that we just want to raise right away. Uh, okay. So, like, yeah, this is a, this is, and they are. it's not an intuitive spot. You know what I mean? This isn't and like the easiest thing to do. But when it goes check, check, like, let's replace the 10 with the jack. How would this hand fit in on jack for three? Well, it would want to put money in the pot right away. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's one of those good top pair hands that, like, it, it on a lot of runouts can't get a ton of streets of value so it just wants to like push money in the pot right away um and it's the same principle that drives this turn strategy where it's like when he bets three on the jack my hand wants to put in a lot of money right now you know what i mean yeah. i don't want a two five six eight nine queen i don't want those cards you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Like I want to push, I want to, I want to push my value right now. So yeah, uh, yeah look for those spots. Yeah, four three. We didn't even mention those. Those aren't so great. Yeah, yeah. Now you just have to call, and you lose king four. It's like yeah. Yeah, and like obviously if I'd raised, he'd uh, probably folded, and I'd want to pop, and I'd be in a better position. And and that I'm not super concerned about because like maybe he calls and then donks on yeah, the yeah. floor, and you lose a bigger yeah, pot. You know what I mean? But like it doesn't yeah. matter. It's it's yeah. mostly the fact that the jack comes. And this guy, like a lot of players, just says, oh, he has ace high a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bet my four for like value protection. You know what I mean? And he's drawing dead against your hand. But when you yeah. raise here, if he's doing that with a four, what do you think he's doing with his tens? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you think he's doing with the jack five suited? Right? He's just going to bet them all. And so we yeah. can get like a lot of value right away. So that's definitely, yeah. I, I think, a good concept that, that hopefully you can take. No, that's good. And it's about me like not having the fear of doing it. So it's, conquering that and realizing logically that's the right thing to do and yeah. using that logic and data to sort of drive me instead of a fear yeah yeah for sure totally agree with that, totally agree with that. And, and and i have like i think that you're, you're going to do it you know what i mean like you, i think that it's all about clarity like when you have clarity yeah. around the strategy it becomes yeah. easier to do whereas like yeah you're a little more unsure about the strategy. It's a little tough. It's like, it's really easy in those spots, to like fall back and just like, ah, I'm not going to do that. You know, but when you have, like, when you have the like clear, clear mindedness about it, it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Check, check's perfect. Check, check's great. Like small, better checks, fine. Three rep pot, tiny. Oh, that's fine. I thought you bet nine, but he bet nine. Perfect. You just lose. Wow. Twos. I, I think most times they just have like a red ace. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where they're just like, don't, I don't want a club to come. <laughs> good board. Great bet size. Good hand. So you're overcalling these suited aces. I think it's okay. You should squeeze them at some frequency. You should probably fold them at some frequency. Actually, that was one of the things. So my, I understand my big blind squeezing ways better than I understand my button squeezing ways. Okay. Right? Yeah, let, let's talk about it briefly. So when it goes raise call, you want to have really high equity stuff with good board coverage in your squeeze. So I, I actually might even have it. Yeah, so, so I'm not going to have it totally, but let's let's just look briefly at this. So like, let's look at hijack. So you see in this spot how like this is button versus hijack. We're really mixed, you know, but we could kind of say that if we squint our eyes, it's like kind of a polarized strategy. Okay. We're doing a lot more calling with the ace, jack, ace, 10, king, 10, king, jack, king, queen. And then we're doing more three bang with like the queen nine, king nine, king eight, this kind of stuff, right? And yeah, so yeah. what happens in a squeezing range is the polarity gets shifted. And so we're really not very polar in a squeeze range. We're, these hands here, like king nine, queen nine, just shift up. 
And so we end up folding the bottom of our range type stuff. And then we squeeze our high equity stuff. And then our call becomes very thin about these pairs and like a little bit of this. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So in a squeeze range, no matter how polar your range is, it gets less polar. Okay. So like, like a big blind range is polarized because we have calls, but it's a really linear three betting strategy, you know? Like big blind versus button. Like, look at that. And we're just taking our best hands and three bed, you know? And so the way that the big blind would squeeze is going to just shift it up and forward. You know, it's like, okay. here, cold four bet strap. You see, it's just like super linear, you yeah. know? Well, okay, this is four betting strap. Sorry, this is not quite, this isn't, this isn't squeeze, but each stage will just become more and more linear. If you're okay. facing a raise, you're pretty linear. If you're facing a raise and a call, you're really linear. If you're facing a okay. raise and a three bet, you're extremely linear. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So like each yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stage, your range gets tighter and more composed of your best hands. Okay. But we can still have some hands like ace four seated and ace five seated to yeah. squeeze with. That's, that's like okay. the board coverage type stuff where it's like it's a good hand, you know. Uh, but, but yeah. Mm, this is rough. I think just fold, yeah. I would just raise probably, but I, I don't love over limping in general. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but I just, I just haven't seen the data. Like it's just hard for me to think that with the rake, it's like really easy to make money as an over limp. And so it's not something I do very often. So I, yeah. I don't, without sure. knowing why I didn't, it, I don't, I, it's hard to explain because yeah. it doesn't, I even think looking, fine. I think, why, why, why have I did it? Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. In general, I like the way you're approaching limps. Like, I, I think it's yeah. fine too. Uh, this is another spot where it's like you just you just want to put money in the pot right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He bets so, the minimum. You have a good top pair. You just need to make the seven. So I I, I remember this from last time. So I, the reason why I'm doing it is because again, as like I said, obviously I've done some of Brad Walton's courses. So I've done this pre from boot camp. Nice. I've done this neutralizing flop leads. And cool. that was, so this is why I did it, because in his, his flop leads, you call and then you do certain strategies after uh, okay. the turn. So that's why, that's why if you see me just calling, it's because I'm just following the strategy from his calls. Got it. So is he, is he saying that you want to call because we want to keep his range really wide? Yeah. So yeah, you keep, you call everything on the flop and then, Depending on what you got, you know whether it's pair, um, their bot, uh, bet size, and um, the texture of the board, you either you, you know you raise or call depending on that. Okay. And then obviously you can sometimes you can have air like ace high air call, and then you can lead like raise a bet. So that's why I'm that's why I'm doing this at the moment because gotcha. obviously I'm trying to. A follow a strategy from the core so yeah i'm trying yeah. to implement that into yeah so, so, into, yeah. so it's reasonable one thing i want to like just you know i don't i, I don't want to first off i really like brad you know what i mean i, re, I really yeah. like brad and i think he's really strong and good but one thing i want to mention briefly is that like what do you think the average lead size here is from, from a big one player uh you know like maybe three, yeah. two, two point five three. I'm with that, right? It's like probably something like close to half pot, maybe a little less. Like yeah. Let's call it three big blinds. Yeah. So if that's average lead size, is one big blind closer to check or lead? Check. It's kind of closer to check. And so like what happens yeah, yeah. In, in like in different strategies is like when people min bet, you kind of approach it as if they checked because like yeah. he only bet one big blind here, which is like, almost like checking mm -hmm. you know imagine if the average lead side was seven and he bets one yeah which like mm -hmm. you just should approach it like a check because like he it's not like he led for a pot you know yeah, yeah. and so what would we do if he checked we would bet okay. a medium size oh, yeah. you know what i mean so it's like so just just kind of one thing to like think about in game I, i'm okay in general i'm sure brad has really strong strategies for like yeah, facing yeah, yeah. leads but when somebody goes one big blind it's like okay 
probably yeah. raise that one and then and just be like it was closer to a chat <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 no that's fair enough. that's fair enough. cool let's see what he had i'm guessing he had like king six or something yeah king eight right you see this a lot where like people just like yeah. lead because they don't want to get you know they don't want to have to play a big pot with a marginal hand in this stuff and it's like if we just go raise bet that he might fold by the river to be fair but yeah. on a, on clean runouts we end up getting a lot yeah. of money in person okay no that's cool i like this size tiny good so in general were you quite happy with my pre-flop play is that quite pre-flop plays really good flop i mean like oh, almost all your streets i'm, I'm like pretty pretty reasonably happy with um yeah i think that like being a little bit sharper with like your barreling frequencies yeah. in terms of like your hand types you know i think that you yeah you're, you're getting to the point where you're like okay that's a good hand type you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. like you kind of have that in your mind which is good that and then the turn raising i i yeah. think is are both yeah. like can be really uh can really help generate win rate more win rate for you um, I think those are the two things I'll try and identify yeah. when I next play because then I can like target to those Perfect. specific the, spots. The third one is going to be the protection stuff. And I think that might be the biggest actually, where it's like yeah. when we're betting for purely protection and it's like a thin value protection, it almost always fits into a small size. Whereas when we bet large, when we have a hand that wants to push a lot of value right away, like the vulnerable top pair stuff, those are typically our big bet size. That's the third one. And the fourth one is playing versus small blind. I think if you, I think if you change that slightly, that's going to help you a lot too, where it's like, okay. we want to be more polar right away because like they're only calling, you know, 12%. Like we saw the King three suited. It's so like, maybe they're calling a little bit wider, but there's no way they're calling 55%, which is what you're opening. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so polarizing right away, I think is sharp. Cool. And I'm actually going to like, I, I am going to have to go. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. But I am going to go through some of your big blind first hands, just like in my free time over the next few days. And I'm going to send you some notes because like, I think that we did it. I think we got a lot of stuff on the button. And I think the yeah. next most important thing is big blind burst button. And it's okay. and, and so I want to, I just want to like skim through them on my own. And then I'll probably send you some notes uh, over the next like three to five days or something like that. And that's awesome. Thank you very much. Great. No problem, dude. No problem. Cool. I hope you have a great week and, uh, and we'll, we'll chat over discord. Okay. Cool. Have a good day yourself. Talk Thanks, to you man. soon. Thanks. Talk to you soon. See you Thank man. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.